I think one of the biggest problems with our school board is too much politics, not enough parent involvement, not enough parent voices, genuine parent voices and genuine community voices. Something that I hope will change through the years. And now in the current climate, we're also having private interest groups coming in with their agendas, and that's a problem. And in the light of the current funding crisis that our schools are facing, particularly the state withdrawing a substantial amount of adjustment aid and hundreds of millions of dollars, our schools are already suffering financially and they need strength and they need real innovative strategies in order to solve it and to keep our schools afloat, not to mention have them actually succeed. So one of the things that my nonprofit parent group and others in the city that I know of have been doing is by supplementing the school's regular budget that comes from the district by running their nonprofit operation and, and constantly amplifying it and, and increasing it, whether it's through running the after school programs or summer programs or doing huge fundraisers, going to donors choose, going online and constantly bringing in other um, sources of revenue for our public schools to supplement the deficiencies that our district is experiencing. That's a great question because that inequity is something that needs to be understood um, properly. So the Title I aid that is usually given to specific schools based on their demographics, specifically based on the percentage of low and reduced income lunches that that school is receiving, which helps identify the percentage of the low income families that are enrolled in that school, it varies from school to school, from neighborhood to neighborhood. So of course, in downtown Jersey City, the percentage of those families has lowered in the past few years because of the change in demographics, because of the gentrification effect. Which is why the amount of Title I aid to those schools have exponentially decreased. And it prompted the parent groups to kind of higher efficiency and, and, and resourcefulness. However, in other um, in other schools where the percentage of low-income families is still large, the Title I aid is still coming in. However, the key becomes to manage it in such a way that it benefits children to the most possible capacity, which is why parent involvement is so crucial. So we're not talking uh, about necessarily finding money for certain schools, but to finding ways to provide information, education, and, and ways of applying th that aid which is available in ways that could benefit children the most and those schools the most. I think their biggest hope was to um, retain some of the aid or to bring it back through a lawsuit. I'm not sure that that has been successful, which goes to show that we need other ideas and we need them fast. Um, there has been an initiative through the payroll tax from the parent community and the local community to bring some of their much needed revenues into the schools, but more, much more is needed obviously because teachers are getting laid off left and right and that is a huge problem for us. I like to think that the raising the local tax levy would be the last resort, always, because I am a homeowner and because we are already getting priced out of our city. And particularly, we're talking about the middle class community that is usually very supportive of the schools, that is eagerly and willingly sharing their, own, you know, with the schools as much as possible, and they're the ones that would be hit the most by the by the tax levy. So that should be the last resort, which is why the payroll tax came. As a, as a needed remedy at the time, but there are so many more things that could be done, in my opinion, that could stave off the tax levy if not prevent it. I want to emphasize that our advocacy, particularly that came out of the PS16 parent group, has gone well beyond the city council meetings of last year and the, the teacher layoffs that were received last year uh, during the last spring. We have gone as far, you know, going years back as to go to Trenton, attend state meetings, trying to pre-anticipate the budget crisis that is about to befall our schools. We have written to state legislators, we have written to state senator, um, uh, State Senate President Steve Sweeney asking to assist our city council with implementing reforms that will allow sharing the pilot revenues 
with the schools you know currently as fast as possible we have also addressed our state legislatures trying to reform the purchasing system that our district uses which is basically the pri the public sector is tied into a purchasing system that is very overpriced so the schools are leaking money into these pre-approved vendor lists which are triple quadruple the the free market prices that all that is also the reason why a lot of our parents and teachers are now trying to shop through the donors choose and the amazon wish lists and trying to get the same school items for classrooms but at a much reduced price trying to kind of make the most out of the small budgets that they are now given so we're trying to be innovative in every which way and that's where the adv advocacy came from we were just continuing what we were already doing and that actually speaks for other parent councils in the city too. People who had their ear to the ground, they knew exactly what to do and when to do it. And so it was very organic in that way. To answer that question, we do not have to go farther than the statements made by the Change for Children candidates themselves. Specifically being that one of the solutions offered by them to solve our current school funding crisis is to use the developer's assistance to provide additional school space, perhaps in new construct, newly constructed buildings. Now, while on paper it sounds like a good idea, especially for the overcrowded areas, the questions that arise with that and that have not yet been answered is how do they plan to get the school de uh, development authorities permission to do this how long will it take and how will it be how will the district be forced to negotiate for that space is it going to be provided to the district rent free or not because if the district is going to end up renting out this newly available space that's once again taking funding away from the district and putting nothing in so either way whatever freedom may be suggested by these by this new group it still does not give anything into our district Because I ran independently and because I absolutely see the value in having independent voices, that is why I am primarily supporting Tara Stafford, who is running as an independent candidate, because to me she embodies the bridge. My campaign motto was building bridges between the corporate sector, the school district, the, the community and such, and, and she personifies that bridge because she comes out of the roots of the public school education, however she is, she has made her way in the corporate sector, so she understands better than anyone how that can work. And because she's been involved for many years in charity, in assisting the youth, she understands it. And I feel that she really brings those solutions that, that I'm talking about. With regard to the candidates that are currently being supported by the teachers union, specifically um, Gina Vertibello, Gerald Lyons, Darwin Ona, and LeKendrick Shaw, those people to me represent, again, those who have roots in the community and or public school education of the city. And they have the experience and the roots needed. So ultimately, they represent the community that is already working with our public schools. And so it will allow the continuity and the momentum that our school district needs right now. They have the integrity, they have the experience, Experience, they have the knowledge. But the union is endorsing Sudan Thomas. And he's been the board president now for, I guess, two years. Um, how would you rate his performance as the board president before even factoring in some of the other political shenanigans that have been going on that now we have a, a clear FBI investigation into? And how concerning is that to you as far as solving the big issues? And has Sudan been part of the solution solving some of these funding issues or has he been part of the problem? You've said it, shenanigans. And shenanigans has been, I think, what turned a lot of the parents away from supporting the current board president. I think that as the parent community uh, has been observing the behavior of the school board during the past year, specifically the teacher layoffs and the funding crisis, there has been so much misinformation um, that we were forced to navigate through. And it was so frustrating, especially when our teachers and our children were on the line, that that is not something that we can just overlook especially in addition to what you've just described as the allegations of misconduct and and I cannot ignore it it has no place in our public schools they they're already suffering enough <laughs>